back to Buona Papa. Today I want to share with you a lovely pasta recipe that is perfect for babies, toddlers and adults. Yes, with one recipe we're going to feed the whole family. Chickpeas, zucchini, tomatoes and anchovies pasta. A super yummy summer recipe that I'm sure you and your kids will love. Let's start together. First thing to do, we're going to heat the olive oil with the garlic and the turmeric in a skillet. And we're going to let the oil warm for one minute, nothing more. Then we're going to add our summer zucchini. I chop them in small pieces and as you can see I mix the color yellow zucchini and green zucchini to make it even more fun. I'm going to stir and let it cook for five minutes up until the zucchini will get nice and tender. Then I will turn off the stove and set it aside. Meanwhile, we're going to prepare the pot full of water to boil our pasta. Let's keep going preparing a nice chickpeas and basil pesto. In a food processor, we're going to add the chickpeas and I reserved one tablespoon of chickpeas to give more texture at the end. We're also going to add half of the zucchini mix, the basil, three anchovies fillets. Anchovy fillets are awesome for babies and for toddlers and even for adults. They are loaded with omega-3s and it's a nice way to use anchovies in a recipe. We are adjusting with a pinch of salt and you can skip the salt if you're cooking this recipe for babies under 12 months. And last ingredient, a nice drizzle, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. We are going to let our food processor work in order to transform our ingredients in a super nice and creamy combination. At this point, this puree can be perfectly served to little ones starting from six months of age as a baby puree. It's loaded with flavors, with nutrients, proteins, omega-3s, and it's super, super tasty. Or can be served and used for our pasta. So let's keep going. The water is boiling. I'm going to add one tablespoon of sea salt and then I'm going to add my pasta. And I will follow the directions on the packaging of the pasta and I will drain the pasta when it's ready and cooked. I always reserve a cup of starchy boiling water from the pasta if I need to thin my pasta sauce. Now it's time to combine together all the ingredients. In a nice bowl we're going to add the pasta. We're going to add a few tablespoons of our chickpeas and zucchini pesto. Add some starchy water from the boiling pasta if needed to thin the pasta sauce. And on top we're going to also put a few tablespoons of the zucchini mix, the chopped cherry tomatoes, and the tablespoon that we left of chickpeas. And try one cherry tomatoes because the sweeter the better. If they are a bit acidic, you can skip them. That's why it's important that the sweet tomatoes, the cherry tomatoes, they are in season and super sweet. Mix everything together. Last touch, you can serve the pasta with a tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese or pecorino on top. This is totally optional, but will add another punch of flavor to the recipe. You can prepare in advance the sauce and you can use it and cook the pasta when you need to serve dinner or lunch. How to store any leftover? With pasta recipes, you have two options. My favorite one is to have leftover of the sauce. So cook only the quantity of pasta that you think you're going to finish. And then if you have sauce leftovers, like I did for this recipe, I'm going to save and store the leftover of the sauce only in the fridge for up to three, four days, or you can freeze them in the freezer for up to three, four months. If still you have pasta already dressed leftover, you can save them in the fridge for up to three, four days, and usually I reheat them on a skillet so that with some, maybe just a drizzle of olive oil, oil reheat the pasta in the skillet so that basically the outside will get just a bit 
crunchy um, and it will not be soggy and gluey. <laughs> that's why usually I don't like reheated pasta. But that's a way how you can reheat it and still serve it and it's real nice and tasty. The chickpea, basil and anchovies pesto can be also be served as a baby puree. If you have more than you need, you can store the leftovers in the fridge, in a baby food container for up to two, three days, or you can freeze them in the freezer for up to two, three months. How to make this recipe gluten-free? You can make the recipe gluten-free in an easy way that is substituting a gluten pasta with a gluten-free one. And to be honest, there are amazing options on the market. Uh, some brands, they have uh, the exactly the same kind of pasta, simply with the gluten-free flour. I also tried some uh, rice pasta. They are not bad. Um, I would not suggest for this recipe a, a pasta that is made with legumes. So lentil pasta, uh, beans pasta they don't work very well because they get very very creamy and the sauce is already creamy so creamy con creamy it will be too thick the final result will be too thick um, but you can try the regular gluten-free pasta and it works very well can I substitute chickpeas? Uh, yes, you can. I already tried this recipe with white cannellini beans. It works nicely too. Even if I have to say chickpeas are lovely. Which kind of chickpeas should I use? Uh, shortcut, I use canned chickpeas. I have a brand that I trust, super low sodium. Sometimes I find a no sodium one, it's organic. And I like those kind of chickpeas. Or if you have time, you can use dried chickpeas, soak them overnight, boil them more or less for one hour and then use them for the recipe. And maybe you can boil a big quantity, a big batch so that they are ready, ready to be used for many other recipes. Can I substitute anchovies? Yes, you can, even if I think that this is uh, a very good ingredient for this recipe for nutritional reasons. Uh, I love the fact that anchovies, they have uh, a high, high amount of omega-3s uh, and they don't have mercury because they are tiny fishes. So uh, the level of mercury is nothing in them. Uh, but still, I understand if you do not find uh, anchovies, uh, um, I would either skip totally the ingredient uh, or you can add uh, half a sardine. Uh, that's another substitution. I really, really hope you're going to enjoy this recipe. It's one of our summer favorite ones. If you have any question, leave them in the area here below. I will do my best to reply. Of course, if you haven't done so, subscribe to Buona Papa. You will receive every single week a new recipe from me. And now, ciao, ciao, ciao.